All right, today I'll be talking about a Dakota Alert 2500 series driveway alarm and modifications that can be made to it to allow it to better um, inform you when someone has uh, tripped the sensor. These, this Dakota Alert series, this 2500 series, this is the receiver right here, what it basically looks like. And it has four zones and there are different types of uh, sensors that you can purchase to use with it. This setup that I bought came with the uh, magnetic sensor or the, the probe type sensor that you bury next to your driveway. That way when a vehicle drives over it, it senses it and alerts it. There's also motion sensors you can buy and uh, there's magnetic uh, sensors similar to like a security system and push button sensors for a doorbell, etc. Um, I also have one of the sensors set up on my mailbox. That way, on a different zone, you know when someone has delivered mail. Okay, uh, we also have a... Uh, this is called an IP Auto Alarm Dialer. And I'll explain more what that's for here in a second. This is a Baofeng UV5R radio. And this is a battery eliminator for the radio. So basically, what I've done here is created a system that can alert me via SMS text anytime someone uh, trips the driveway sensor. And that is done via this IP auto alarm dialer. I'll go through all of the parts. Um, but, and then I have a UV5R radio because I have it also hooked into the system to where it will broadcast a voice message over the air. That way, if I'm out on the property, as long as I've got a another walkie-talkie that's on the same channel, I will be able to hear the um, alerts for the mailbox or the driveway alarm. The last part of it is a remote control um, switch that allows me to turn on or off the IP sender so it can only be used certain times uh, and not others. That way if I'm home it's not sending me a text message. I'm wasting um, internet and you only get 500 messages a year so kind of be kind of sparingly on that. Alright so here is the Dakota Alert system that I purchased is the DCPA 2500. It's $239 on Amazon. It says up to half a mile range for detect a vehicle out to about 50 feet. I'd say that both of those are a little bit of an exaggeration. I have a 800 foot driveway and it is up a hill and through some trees and it works just fine for that through some walls of the house and then down through the woods and the trees. Uh, I think it would work a little bit further. There's a mailbox that's even farther than the driveway alarm and it works with that as well, a mailbox sensor. Here is the sensor that I have mounted in the mailbox. It's $34.99 at Amazon. This is a what's called the universal transmitter, but it does come with a magnetic switch. So you can either use the butt push button or you can use it with the magnetic switch. So when the mailbox door comes open, it trips the magnetic switch, sends an alert. Each of the sensors can be programmed to alert whatever zone you'd like on your receiver. The receiver makes a different sound for each zone and you cannot change that sound so you have to program the sensor to the zone sound that you'd like to hear. Here is the IP auto alarm dialer. Basically how this works is you plug in your um, if you have an Ethernet connection, you have to have an Ethernet connection to plug in to here. And then this is a standard 12 volt power port on the side. So as you can see here, and it, whenever you provide 12 volts to this device, and that you have to provide 12 volts for approximately 10 to 15 seconds, depending on how quick your network is, it will send the signal out and it will only send it one time for each time the power cycled on this device. It's a very simple, simple device. You set up through a web page where you want 
your notifications to be sent. Phone numbers, you can either have it sent a recorded message, or in my case, I just have an SMS text that's sent. So, like this. It's an example of the setup page. Okay, so $135.99 on Amazon. There is no monthly fee. It's just you get 500 SMS messages a year. Last time I checked. It doesn't say that on here anymore. I don't know if it's unlimited or what now, but back when I purchased it, January 2nd of this year, it was 500. Here is the switch I used. Like I said, what basically, I'll explain how it's wired in a minute, but it's just a simple switch. So from another location in the house, I can shut off the receiver's ability to send the alert via the IP auto dialer. It's basically just shutting the, the power adapter for that off. Um, how it works is when a alarm is tripped on zone 3, which is my driveway alarm, there's actually a relay. There's a set of relays for each zone in here. And there's normally closed, normally open position. If you're familiar with relays, uh, I just have the positive side of the power coming from the transformer to the common terminal and then the normally open terminal. That way when the when the alarm saw sounds, it closes the terminal, and via the switches in here, you can set it for the length of time. And I have it set for a minute. I had it set for, I believe it's 10 seconds, and it wasn't quite enough sometimes. And your only options are like 10, 60, and then longer than that. So 60 seconds powers that up, and that sends out the alarm. So you can only get one driveway alert every 60 seconds, but that works for me. All right, in my case, as you can see, uh, I don't have a didn't have an Ethernet jack already available, so I used a power line Ethernet converter. That way I could plug one in near my router and then one in where I've got my receiver here. It's up in the second story of the house. And something similar to this, this power line Ethernet to power line adapter, which means you can just send a Ethernet signal over your AC outlets as long as they're on the same branch in your um, circuit panel and it works very very well for this especially it's just a short data burst uh, it works very very well so kind of solves that issue so that's another 40 to 50 dollars on Amazon if you don't have a way to get your Ethernet to your router all right also using in this project is the radio like I said to transmit the audio output and for this I just using a Baofeng UV5R they're dirt cheap, about $25 on Amazon. You do have to have knowledge of how to program radios. You cannot just put any frequency into here. You need licenses to operate on certain frequencies, or you need to be a ham radio operator. Um, there are certain frequencies that you can use, uh, depending on your license level, but you need to do the research on that. I'm just showing you what I'm using here. Um, I've also, and right now I've just got the battery pack on, but... As I explained, I'll be using a battery eliminator and just hooking this to a power adapter that provides 12 volts DC. Add a couple amps. It's got to be enough to run the radio. That way I don't have to worry about charging the battery. And this can be on 24-7 when I want it to be. You can also get the battery eliminator. Very cheap on Amazon for $6.87 Prime. And so the only thing you'd need besides that is another 12-volt adapter. I have just another Baofeng here. This is a UV82. This is just so I can show you it receiving the alarm from here. So how I have it wired is the speaker output is what goes into the radio. And all I did was, with the, the UV5R, it includes a called a or headset cable that has a speaker and an earphone and what I did is I cut the cable off right before it gets to the microphone and inside of this cable there are three wires you want the red wire actually there's four wires you want the red wire and the yellow wire the red wire is going to be your positive microphone input and the yellow wire is your negative microphone input 
Um, so you run the red wire to the red speaker wire and the yellow wire to the black one. And I had to use a little bit of a lead in between here, so that's why it's a different color. But um, it just gets wired directly to that. And what that does is it sends out to the microphone input, which is the larger jack that plugs into the side of the radio. Okay, so then you have to set up the radio. And how you do that is go into the menu and we're going to find the Vox setting. I have mine, uh, you want to make sure it's turned on. And I put mine right in the middle at five and that seems to work okay. Uh, because it's plugged in directly. You know, it goes from one to 10, one being more sensitive than the other. So once you get voice activated, turned on, we're ready to go. Just to show you how this works, I can power cycle this and it plays a tune when it starts up. So here's my receiver radio right here. Here's my transmitter radio and they're on the same frequency. So when I power cycle this, it will play a tune and broadcast from the broadcast radio and the reception radio will receive it. Alright, I don't know if you noticed, it cut off like the first second of the transmission because the voice activated had to basically catch up. So, it may cut off the very first part of your alert if you use a longer chime sound on here, you'll get most of it, but that's just something for you to keep in mind. Like I said, I only use that when I'm out on the property, and I don't want to waste one of the 500 SMS alerts for like when I'm gone. So anytime I'm around the property and you want to hear that the mail has come or someone is coming up your driveway alarm, etc., as long as you have one of these on you, on the frequency, which we also use just to communicate around the property, you will hear your alert from your driveway alarm. There's also a 12 volt output in addition to the relays that this can be set to trip anytime any one of the alerts goes off. So in theory if you wanted this to send you an alert for any of the zones you could just wire the 12 volt output directly to here. Uh, like I said that doesn't really work for me because I only I don't want to be notified via that when the mail has come I just want to notify be notified when the driver alarm is tripped which is why I have it directly wired to the relay I'm also planning on hooking this into my home alarm system by using a wire I have a Honeywell system using a wireless Honeywell sensor also wired onto the uh, I'll use the 12 volt output connect it to a relay and since a home alarm system uses a normally closed circuit that opens when it's tripped. I'll wire it so when this goes off it opens the circuit or opens the relay and it will just be a way to log any time that this trips um, for you know just for logging purposes. I'm not going to have it set up to set the alarm off if someone pulls in the driveway. Obviously we wouldn't want that but you can set it up as like a trouble zone to where it just uh, basically logs it in the system and it's another way if you have your chime on your alarm system turned on it's another alert that will tell you that someone is there if you're near a keypad and you can hear it chime all right so just to recap how i've got this wired as far as the ip alarm center you know there's an ethernet cable that runs from it to that so that goes to my router i have this is just the power adapter for the 2500 series receiver. And then this is the power adapter that powers IP alarm sender. So when the switch is turned on for this, it sends power through here over this black wire, which then spliced into this white wire, which sends the positive to the relay when and it and it's obviously in a shutoff position when the 
driveway alarm is tripped, it closes the relay for 60 seconds, which I have set up on here, which then completes the circuit and turns the box on. When it turns the box on, it sends out the signal over the Ethernet cable out onto the internet, which in turn sends me a text message on my phone that someone has tripped the driveway alarm. Uh, once again, I do not have it set up to send me an alert when someone opens the mailbox. So now I will demonstrate for you how that works. All right, so I've got my phone programmed to where it has a special alert or sound that it makes when the driver alarm is tripped. So here you'll see, you'll hear the driveway alarm trip and then the mailbox. So there's the driveway alarm, which it's now broadcasting the signal. <laughs> and it just, just takes a few seconds, obviously, to send the SMS text. And there's the mailbox. So I turned the camera off for half a second because it took a few seconds that time and then it popped up in my text. So there it is. Um, but you get the idea. It sends you a text message. All right, a couple little other things. You can. There's actually a delay you can set on here. You can program the unit to where you can walk up before you leave the house, press the button, and it will cause a five minute delay. That way, number one, you don't trip the system and use waste of text. Number two, if you're leaving early in the morning and there's other people in your house sleeping, uh, it won't set the alert for five minutes, so it won't wake anybody up uh, with the chime going off. So that's another nice feature. There, there's a lot of programmable options. Um, you can program the dip switches for to set your own settings. That way, you know, if your neighbor has one of these, uh, you can have it coded differently so you're not getting their alerts, vice versa. There's volume control on the side, I said, and there's these three option settings. And all that can you can read about in the manual, the different options. But I do highly recommend the system. I've had it for over a, a year, year and a half now, and it does work well. Um, the only thing is the it takes expensive CR123A lithium batteries for the... Um, the probe at the bottom of the driveway, which are kind of pricey to replace, but they do last, you know, well over six months um, each use, so you do get your money out of it, but just something to keep in mind. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I hope this video helps you out. Uh, I'm going to try to come up with some kind of neat little housing that I can kind of put all this in and tidy everything up, but I just wanted to have it like laid out so you could see how everything is wired. Like and subscribe. Thanks.